So you've probably noticed in the past on my channel, I've got a bit of a problem when it comes to buying cameras. I'll show you my camera shelf to give you an idea. So when Sony announced their latest updated action camera that has some real similarities to their RX100 point and shoot that was cheaper than the RX100, I was interested. But it was still really hard for me to justify paying $700 for something that's kind of like a GoPro but with better audio, that doesn't actually shoot 4K natively. But then I saw the camera pop up on B&H used in 9 plus condition for $500, $200 off, and this camera just released, I point down because it's, it's right here. The box just showed up less than five minutes ago. So I figured that for the first time through this, we'd open the box up, take everything out. I've gone ahead and pre-cut the tape so I don't have any more incidents. I had an oops with a knife last night. But let's just see what the camera is, what it does, what it looks like, how it runs, and make sure that this nine plus condition is as good as I hope it is. Because it's not the top of the B&H scale. The top is like OB, open box, and that's just before new. So this is nine plus, that's like one or two steps below that. But for 500 bucks, I thought it was worth a shot. So inside of the B&H box, there's the Sony box. They do have this taped up because again, it's not new. It's not just open box, but that's okay. That's an interesting one. So for whatever reason, this came with a one year personal subscription to Office 365, a one user license. I, okay. We've got all of our documentation here, the limited warranty, which I don't think is actually going to be applicable because this is open box instruction manual and international stuff. And then inside of the box, micro USB cable, a wrist strap, Sony branded wall wart. Looks like it's seen better days. This one does five volts at 1.5 amps. And again, it, it looks really rough, but I'm sure it still works. And I'm probably never going to use this. I tend to use the larger bricks that have like four or six or 10 plugs on them. So it's nice to have these, but I have a drawer full of them that are not being used. Here is the battery, which as you can see is a Sony NP BJ1 700 milliamp hour battery, which I think is supposed to offer an hour and a half or two hours of recording, something like that. And these are relatively easy to get on Amazon third party. They're like $30 for two or something like that. So if I love this camera, if I use it a lot, I might pick up a couple extra, but for now this will do. And last, but hopefully not least, fingers crossed here, is the camera itself. So here it is, the Sony RX0. And as you can see on the front here, it has an F4 fixed lens. So this is not F1.8 or 1.7 or anything like you'd get on a traditional point and shoot. It does have a tripod mount here on the bottom. Mentions Zeiss over here on the side. Over here on this side is the battery door. So you just stick a fingernail in there and pop it open. That's where the battery is going to go. Just like that. On the top, there's a couple of buttons. This one appears to be a power button. That one appears to be a capture button. And I think this is the microphone. On the back, you have your LCD display. It's not terribly big. There's a couple of buttons here, up and down. One says display, one says play. A dot, which I can only assume is select or enter. Left and right, one says function. The other one doesn't have anything labeled on it. And then a menu button. And then an open door here, so we'll open that. There is your micro HDMI, micro USB, three and a half millimeter port. And that looks like a microphone jack. I'll have to double check the documentation. And a micro SD card slot. If that's a mic jack, I'm gonna be really impressed. Okay, so far I'm not a big fan of these doors. Had a bit of trouble getting this one to close. The You have to actually pull this back and then push it down at the same time. With this one, it's got a little yellow tab you kind of have to tuck in, and then you pull this button back and push it back in. So it's a little bit tight, but again, not gonna be using those all that often, hopefully. I didn't mention it earlier, but it does have a sort of a sheet of glass of some sort over the lens, so it's flush right here. You're not actually touching the lens. But I'm gonna take a second to check the book and see if it actually has a mic jack, because I haven't seen anybody mention that yet. Well, I'll be number 23 right there, microphone jack. When an external microphone is connected, the internal microphone is turned off automatically. When the external microphone is a plug-in, power type, the power of the mic is supplied by the camera. I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Camera of this size cannot really state the build quality either. It's metal all around the outside and it has a mic jack built into it and it's this size. I'm gonna have to see how the quality is, see what the audio sounds like because if you can put a microphone alongside this, I mean it's a tiny camera to begin with, but to be able to put a mic along with it like a lavalier mic or a shotgun mic, that immediately makes this a much different little monster. I mean the GoPro goes for $400 and it's another 50 or $60 to get the adapter just so you can use the three and a half millimeter. But this comes with it built right in, that's cool. And there is some more info here on the box we didn't really go through. It has a 1.0 type X more RS 15 megapixel CMOS sensor, 24 millimeter lens, it's f4 as we said, 1 32 thousandth of a second shutter, it can do up to 960 frames per second, a thousand if you're in a PAL country, 4K clean HDMI output, so it will do 4K, but it won't do it natively inside the camera. It has to output it over HDMI, which is fine. Multi-camera control, I think you can sync a bunch of these together. 240 shots if you're taking photos, 60 minutes of video. So not quite as good a battery life as I thought it was gonna have. I'm still not disappointed. 
and it is shockproof, crushproof, and waterproof. 10 meters of waterproofing, 2 meters of shockproofing, and 2,000 newtons of crushproof. Dolby Audio, it has the Exmor sensor, Wi-Fi, XAVCS, Bluetooth, all of these things. It's going to work with a bunch of Sony apps too. I cannot wait any longer. I have to turn it on. I have to try it out. That means I also have to find a micro SD card because I didn't buy one with it. Luckily, I have a little Pelican case full of them. So we'll open this back up immediately. The door kind of swings around like it's on a hinge. We put the card in just like this and click it into place. Put the door back on, hopefully, and let's see if it powers up. Unfortunately, battery appears to be dead. Let me give it a little charge. All right, bit of a quick test using the Sony RX0. I don't have any lights turned on in here in my office. Let me walk into some decent lighting here in my living room, dining room, dining room, dining room. So this is a really well lit room. Turn it around. Yeah, the footage looks good on here. Really hard to tell though. This is gonna be backlit because I'm walking against the door, but I'm walking into sort of a medium lit room here. This is the actual living room, so we do have a little bit of light. Then I suppose we will step out back, because it's apparently pretty windy out here at the moment. I don't have anything blocking the mic, so this is a little bit of shade. Let me step out into the sun so you can see me a little bit better. Whoa, that's bright. There we go, outdoors. You can see behind me the chimes moving around. It's decently windy out here, but it's not blowing hard against the, the camera right this very second. Let's pan around. So there we go. We are recording. There you go. So outdoor, bright sunshine. Sunlight is right up there. Back over to me. We'll see how the autofocusing, if it focuses at all, does, or if it just stays on focus. I don't know. I don't know enough about this camera yet. Boy, that's loud. And here's another quick test of the RX0, this time using a lavalier mic, as you can probably see here on my chest. Tap on it so you know that it's working. I've set the audio level to, I think, 7 or 8 inside of the camera. Normally it's 26 as the default, and it seems like this camera records kind of hot, which means that I had to, I had to bump it way down because of this lavalier. So we'll see how it sounds. Quite a few hours later we are back. I do have the camera charged up now. I thought we would just quickly turn it on and go through the menus and whatnot because this is actually really impressive. So to turn it on you press the power button and there it comes on and you might be able to tell if you've used a Sony camera before this looks and feels a lot like every other Sony camera out there. I do a lot of filming on the Sony A5100 and the A6300. I've used a Sony RX100 in the past and they all look and feel pretty much exactly like this. You've got the menu button. You can use that to get into the menus. It's all paginated. As you can see, it goes through these different tabs. You can actually set it to use the large tiles just like the other devices as well. But you just basically page through this, find whatever you're looking for like audio recording or audio recording level, audio level display, wind noise reduction. All of these things are in the menu and then some. The one thing I did not find in the menus though is any sort of stabilization. Now obviously I didn't expect this to have optical steady shot or anything because it doesn't have room for all the extra stuff but some sort of electronic stabilization would have been really nice and I haven't seen any. I took this out on my new scooter earlier today and yes you would expect it to be pretty bumpy and it was so do with that what you will. I guess you could technically just put this on a gimbal and it would be perfect. Get a little tiny GoPro gimbal this would be amazing and actually if you've got one of these little GoPro to tripod adapters they come with every kit you can imagine. These things are a lifesaver when you've got all kinds of GoPro mounts. You just twist this into the tripod mount. But just some of the other things you can get in here. Of course, you can set your image size and your aspect ratio and everything. Change your shooting mode, your focus settings, shutter and metering stuff, and white balance. I mean, you can have creative control over practically every setting inside of this camera. It's really impressive. There's even face detection here if you want it to focus on certain faces. You can change your file formats down here. As you can see, we're set to XAVCS HD. You've also got AVC HD and MP4. You can also change your record settings here, your bit rate and frame rate. So by default, this one was actually set to 24p 50 megabits. I changed it to 1080p 60p 50 megabits. There's also a 120p 50 megabits. I'm actually really curious to see if that's 1080p. I haven't checked that yet. And again, you've got your audio recording settings just like every other Sony camera. If you plug in an external mic to this you can go into the audio recording levels. This was set to 26 by default. I had to take it down to 20 because 26 was just a little too hot for this but you just take it up and down using the buttons here and whenever I plugged in the microphone earlier I used it at I think 8 but you can always reset it back to the 26 default and you can see the level meters there. It's showing you how much it's picking up. If it's spiking it's too high. So if I go up to 26 you can see it's going to kind of start to hit the red. I'm nowhere near the microphone though so if I were close Closer to it like I was earlier it'd be spiking so I would say 20 is about good for me for my voice level for other people maybe higher maybe lower but you've also got things in here like zebras and grid lines 
custom function buttons, the movie button as to whether or not it's always going to be a movie button, audio signals if you don't want it to beep. I kind of like it when these little cameras beep. I turned on airplane mode to save on battery life here, but if you wanted to, you can use your smartphone or your computer or your TV with this. It's got all kinds of Wi-Fi settings and network stuff. It's also got Bluetooth built in. Down in here, you can control all your playback options. You'll see this menu whenever you're viewing photos and videos, and there's monitor brightness settings if you're going to be looking at the monitor while you're out and about, and all just all kinds of other settings here. There's HDMI my settings, USB connection options. Basically, again, if you've used a Sony camera in the past, this is going to be really familiar in terms of the menus. It's just a really small screen. But one thing I found kind of interesting about this, when you're in video mode, this will only focus at certain distances. And as you can probably see right here, it says cancel near mode. If I go ahead and tap on that, cancel near mode. Now it says set to near 0.5 to 1 meter which basically means if you're wanting to focus on something that's close to you, you have to turn it on to that near mode, at least when you're doing video, which means if you're holding the camera really close to your face like this and you're trying to record, you're probably gonna be out of focus, which is why some of the clips that I did with this earlier were out of focus. But this is not a long-term, thorough, in-depth review of the product or anything. I might do one of those later because there's an awful lot to be said about this. And realistically, I might do a full daily vlog with this, just filming my family and my daily life and what's going on, because we've got a lot of stuff going on around Around here right now and we'll have a lot more going over the next few months so if you'd like to see that check out my second channel I do daily vlogs on there occasionally not all the time and I would like to do more and something like this might actually make me want to do more of them especially if I can hook an external mic up to it which I can so let me know what you think of this little camera was it worth $500 would you have paid that for a beginning youtuber to have something that's waterproof crush proof shock proof can take an external microphone and has a tripod mount even though it doesn't work extraordinarily well in low light because it does have an f4 lens for 500 bucks, I still say this is an absolute steal. 700, it's a little bit high, but with the holidays and whatnot, you might be able to catch it on sale, so be on the lookout for that. I'll put a link to where you can find this one over on b &H. I'll see if I can find the link to the used one, because again, this one was used. This was pre-owned, nine plus condition, but $500, absolutely a steal. So if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up down below the video and subscribe to the channel to get notified when new ones become available. Thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you again next time.